Left Peru and sailed to England alone. There he met the Browns and they took him home. Now a new life has begun. He's Windsor Garden's favorite son. Cause he always does his best to help everyone. When a problem appears, he never misses a beat. And always finds a way to land on his feet. Has his very own unique point of view. Looks at everything as if it's brand new. He is friendly and polite. And he tries to do things right But he gets in sticky messes just the same He's curious and speaks his mind But trouble's never far behind It's Paddington Bear, he's one of a kind I'm Paddington Bear Dear Aunt Lucy, today we went shopping At least we tried to Although he doesn't know it yet, Mr Brown needs a new car Henry, why do you insist on hanging on to this old car? Because, Mary, they knew how to make cars in those days. Just feel the quality of that... Oh, oh, oh whoops. Uh, left, Paddington. Yes, Mr Brown. I don't mind doing the turn signals for you, because yours are on the blink. You mean off the blink? As you know, Aunt Lucy, I'm a big believer in coincidences. And when I read about a competition in which the first prize was a Rolls Royce, I just had to enter it for Mr. Brown's sake. All I had to do was think up a slogan for these delicious new currants. Mrs. Brown, does the taste of these currants remind you of anything? Oh, they taste like cough syrup. Yes, I thought it was just me. Mr. Brown? Oh, turn here. Right, Paddington. No, the high street's one way. Left, Paddington. No, it's right. Left. There's someone here who wants to speak to you. You see, Mr. Brown, if you drive all over the road, no one knows which way you're going. Oh, but they do, officer. See? We signal with this. Aha! Non-regulation indicators. Oh, they're actually going to make me pay those tickets? Paddington, there's a letter for you. It's from that current company. Thank you, Mrs Brown. The letter said, congratulations, you're a winner. I couldn't believe it. But I couldn't celebrate right away. I wanted to surprise the Browns. <sighs> I shall have to put myself at the mercy of the court. Does anyone know where Pond Street is? It's near where Mr Brown's going. He'll take you. And Henry, none of this would have happened if you'd bought a new car, like I said. Paddington. Paddington Brown. I won. It says right here. There must be some mistake. We've already awarded the Rolls-Royce to a gentleman from Scotland. He's picking it up this afternoon. Hmm, yes. You didn't read the small print. It's hard to make out, but trust me, you're not our grand prize winner. Oh, but you did receive a consolation prize. You and 9,999 others were sent bookmarks. A bookmark isn't much consolation when you were expecting a Rolls-Royce. Why don't I give you a crate of currants? We're trying to get rid of them. But I don't even like currants. And I've eaten 15 boxes of them. Between you and me, I don't know how you could stand them. Reminded me of cough syrup. May I ask what your slogan was? A current a day keeps the doctor away. <laughs> well, in that case, after 15 boxes, you shouldn't need medical attention for quite... Operative horn, faulty brakes, and the turn signals don't work. It says here you were all over the road, Mr. Brown. But all minor adjustments, Your Honor. And as for the turns, who could blame my wife if she was mixed up about the directions to the high street? <laughs> and certainly the um, person who was doing the signals should not be blamed. He's from Darkest Peru. Darkest Peru? Uh, let's just say. It was an innocent mix-up. Mix-up, indeed. A mix-up that you ever got your driving license in the first place. 
But to show the accused leniency, I will order you to be retested immediately. An examiner will meet you shortly at your car. Oh, and Mr. Brown, I suggest you buy a new one. It had been a busy morning, what with winning a Rolls Royce and losing it all in the same day. I was in need of a little relaxation. Are you Mr. Brown? <sighs> um, yes. Right, let's get started, shall we? Do you have a current license? Ah, uh, current? No, thank you. I've just got over a cold. Now, your license. Oh. Oh, that's my marmalade sandwich. A marmalade sandwich? You like them too? Don't worry, I always keep an extra one under my hat in case of an emergency. Let's get started. Please start the car. I'll do my best. The only driving Mr. Brown usually lets me do is with my shopping basket on wheels. Mr. Brown? But you are Mr. Brown, aren't you? Ah! Well, yes, I am Mr. Brown, but so is Mr. Brown. He's the Mr. Brown who owns this car, but we both help drive it. Oh. He does all the steering and changing gears, and I look after the directions. Right! Yes, just like that. Now, since the turn signals aren't working, I usually use this big arrow in the back seat. Oh, God, new car indeed. Oh, Mr. Mr. Brown! Hello? <laughs> Left, Paddington! No, right! Right, Paddington! Oh, there's Mr. Brown now. Shall we stop? He really is much better at this than I am. Ah! Ah! Oh, dear. I think you've hit someone's car. That's not someone's car! That's my car! <laughs> Well, Mr. Brown, thank you for offering to pay for the repairs to my car. And you passed your driving test with flying colours. As for the other, Mr. Brown, here is a special S permit. It's for your shopping basket on wheels. It's a lifetime permit, so I trust we never see you here again. And, Mr. Brown, I think it's time you got a new car. Hmm. We were visiting the Barbie Ranch in Montana in the United States to research a chapter for Mr. Gruber's book, The World and Its Wonders. So I decided to learn a little about steers. They breathe rather noisily when angry. They seem very attracted to the color red. Mr. Brown, be careful! And perhaps the most interesting fact of all, steers love marmalade. I got the vermin. Now get going before you get hurt. Thank you, sir. May I help by closing the gate? My name's Billy Bob, and I don't need help from city folk. He didn't sound very friendly, Mr. Gruber. I think perhaps he has his mind on other things, Mr. Brown. Whoa! I don't believe that steer thinks Mr. Billy Bob is friendly either, Mr. Gruber. You know, Mr. Brown, when I was your age, I used to dream of being a cowboy. But who's going to teach us? Why, the trail boss, of course. The trail boss? The trail boss is a seasoned veteran. I bet he'll be as rough and tough as they come. You mean she'll be as rough and tough as they come. My name's Loretta, and this is my ranch. And I'd say you boys need some real cowboy duds. Good. Good enough, I suppose. They wanted me to try on a ten-gallon hat, but I couldn't ever carry more than half a gallon on my head. Well, that's all right. You can be my undercover cowboy and keep your eye out for cattle rustlers. Cattle rustlers? Your job is to protect my herd. But who would want to steal your herd, Miss Loretta? You never know in these parts. And you won't know until it's too late. <laughs> Yee-haw! Rada, cowboy! If you want to 
be a cowboy, Mr. Brown. You're going to have to learn to ride a horse. I felt like pointing out that it was Mr. Gruber who wanted to be a cowboy, not me. But it was taking me all my time to stay in the saddle. <laughs> giddy up, giddy up, buckaroo. Rope the steer with your lasso. Giddy up, giddy up, shout yahoo. Your cowboy tried and true. A cowboy needs a horse to trust. A saddle reins and bit are a must. He always wears a wide-brimmed hat to keep the sun and rain off his face and back. To reach the stirrups is hard if you're small, but once you're up there, you really feel tall. Woo! Kick your heels to make him trot. Pull back on the reins when you want to stop. The cowboys work in all kinds of weather. Their jobs to keep the herd together. If they travel long ways with the cattle, they might take a nap right there in the saddle. Woo! Giddy up, giddy up, faster now. Ride your horse and rope a cow. Buckaroo, shout yahoo! Your cowboy tried and true. Your cowboy tried and true. Yeehaw! <laughs> well done, Mr. Brown. You must tell me your secret. Marmalade. It sticks anything to anything. Would you like to try some? Uh, no, thank you, Mr. Brown. I'll race you around the corral. <laughs> Yippee! While you city slickers keep Loretta busy, I'm just gonna help myself to her cattle. Come on! Shoo! Shoo! Come on! Shoo! Shoo! Good steer. Good steer. We've got to be careful. This herd hasn't been branded yet. Once you've finished your bath, Billy Bob, don't forget to clean the stables. Yes, Miss Loretta. Now, to be a real cowboy, you've also got to learn how to lasso cattle. All right. Now it's your turn. No mistakes this time. I'm gonna get me that cattle. I hope I don't rope myself. Why, I'm gonna have to get Billy Bob to clean up this mess. In the meantime, let's go have some dinner. Whew, wait. There's no getting by them city slippers. Thank you, Loretta. Or should I say, much obliged. Well, I'm gonna hit the hay. Why don't you two just do me a favor and make sure the cattle are all locked up? Darn tooting, Miss Loretta. Mr. Gruber, what did Loretta mean when she said her herd hadn't been branded? Ranches mark their cattle with a brand to identify them. Without the brand, there's no proving the cattle are yours if they get lost. Good night, Mr. Brown. But don't stay up too late. Cowboys are notoriously early risers. Good night, Mr. Gruber. I was worried about Loretta's herd not being branded, so I decided to surprise her. We woke early the next morning for more cowboy training, but we had an unfortunate surprise instead. Oh, no, Mr. Brown. The herd, it's gone. This was the work of a cattle rustler, boys, and I need your help. Ah. Yeehaw! Come on, move! You are the laziest herd I've ever rustled. <gasps> Hand over that herd, you rustler. Ha! You can't prove this is Loretta's herd. She didn't brand them. But I did. Mrs. Bird often says that once my marmalade chunks are stuck to something, they never come off. So I branded the herd with my chunks last night. This is your herd, Miss Loretta. Ah. Good lasso, Mr. Gruber. Well, you fellas may not be your average cowboys, but you certainly have a knack for it. I think it's more a matter of marmalade than knack, Miss Loretta. Oh. Display windows are wonderful things to look at, Aunt Lucy. 
They always make me want to enter the store. But I suppose that's what they're supposed to do. And it must work, because going in is exactly what Mrs. Brown, Judy and I were going to do. Please make sure you stay close, Paddington. I don't want to lose you. Oh, I wouldn't let you lose me, Mrs. Brown. As promotions manager, Miss Pender, drawing customers through our doors is your job. This contest had better work. <laughs> Business is terrible. Barkridge's will be full of shoppers in no time, Mr. Grandel. Just watch. Step inside, ladies and gentlemen. Barkridge's is holding a mystery contest. Find the mystery jar, guess its weight, and win a prize. Hmm. <sighs> Mrs. Brown, Judy, did you see the marmalade jar going down the escalator? Oh, Paddington. You've got marmalade on the brain. Perhaps it's because I missed my cocoa and buns with Mr. Gruber. We'll meet you at the bottom of the escalator in half an hour, dear. Now, Paddington, we must go and let you try on some new clothes. I'm very happy with my old ones, Mrs. Brown. I take it the young, um, bear. Gentlemen, will not require this anymore, madam. I certainly do. I've always had that hat. It was handed down to me by my uncle in darkest Peru. It's covered in reminders. Well, there you are. Perhaps you have something nice in the way of a coat. It won't be easy. We don't normally cater for bears. It's the legs, you know, and the arms, and... and the... Uh, but rest assured, madam, as ever, Barkridge's will rise to the occasion. It's not as if he has to go to work in the city, so he doesn't want anything too smart. There. Fits like a glove. Bears don't wear gloves. They have fur. How about this one, Mrs. Brown? looks the very thing. But isn't the hood a trifle large? Hoods are being worn large this year, madam. It's the latest fashion. But, but it's the same coat. And it's perfect. Ooh, look at the time. Judy will be waiting for us. Look, Mrs. Brown. Ah! We're falling. We're not falling, Paddington. Lifts give you a funny sensation. Some things are funny ha-ha, and some things are funny peculiar. If you ask me, lifts are definitely funny peculiar. Especially after a big breakfast. Oh dear, Paddington. You're quite pale. I feel sick. Will you be all right here for a few minutes, while I look for Judy? I don't know if I'll be all right, but I shall do my best. Hmm. Customer in sight, except for a lone bear. Mr. Brundle will not be pleased. When I woke, there was a lovely cool breeze on my whiskers, so I decided to find out where it was coming from. Then it happened. Suddenly, all the lights went out. I had to get outside where it was light. Paddington was right. I must find him and Mummy and show them. I could practically count the number of customers on one hand. Excuse me, sir. I'm looking for a lady with a bear. That makes two less. A lady and a bear? They disappeared, have they? I don't know. Paddington does have a habit of getting lost. Have no fear, young lady. It won't be too hard to find them. Barkridge's is having one of its off days. I couldn't believe it. It was dark outside, too. I wondered if we were in for a storm. Then it seemed as though the entire sky had fallen on me. Sir, 
Barkridge's is holding a super mystery contest. Let's go inside and see what they have. Welcome! Welcome to Barkridge's. That's it. Step right in. There's room for everyone. Who are you, ruffian? But I'm not a ruffian. I'm a bear. Oh, my. What's going on, Paddington? I was only tidying up the window. Tidying up, indeed. I'm sure the police will like to hear about the mess you created. I think you'll find this... Is this one of your promotional tricks, Miss Pender? Because if it is, I don't like it. But, sir, it's not one of my promotional tricks. Then we should have this bear arrested for all the havoc he's created. It may not be a promotional trick, but it certainly worked. Look! That's what I wanted to tell you, sir. Good work, Miss Pender. And thank you, Bear. The Barkridges would like to show its gratitude. If there's anything in the store you would like, anything, just say the word. I told the manager the word was marmalade, and he gave me the prize jar. See, Mummy? Paddington was right. He also said I could dress their windows for them any time I liked. But I don't think I shall for a while. It's a very muy grande jar, Aunt Lucy, and window dressing can be quite painful. 